everyone, welcome back. It's Lauren. Um, again, Lindsay is out. Hopefully we'll be able to do an episode soon where she can talk a little bit about everything um, that she's gone through, uh, but we'll see. You know, it's up to her to tell in her time. Um, I actually was also supposed to have an interview this week, and unfortunately, a family member was hospitalized with our guest, so unexpected um, circumstances have led me here all by my lonesome just to talk to you guys, so I hope you like me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So today, today I, usually our episodes are a little bit more light and fun and like we try and make jokes and be really like down to earth and grounded. Um, I actually have another podcast that I don't update weekly like this one. It's called Here's Why I'm Crying and I just sort of update it when I'm able to and when I have something to add. Um, for now, it's more of like just a for fun thing. And on that podcast, I get a lot more into like this sort of my sort of like philosophical views, emotional things, um, and just like how I experience life as like a creative person. So, uh, this episode will be a little bit more like that, but I really felt like it was something that was huge in my sort of journey as a parent. So, I wanted to talk about it, and hopefully you guys won't find it to be, like, cheesy, and hopefully you won't just, like, roll your eyes and be like, Lauren is so annoying, bring back Lindsay. Um, but um, what I wanted to talk about is how becoming a stay-at-home mom specifically really changed the way that I view life, like, on the whole. So... First, I want to open with great exciting news that I worked a shift the other day. So, I am a part of this service where uh, it's baristas who are like on call, and that's one of the things that I did before staying home. Um, I have been a barista, like a Starbucks barista. I also used to manage a candy shop, candy shop store. I couldn't decide which one I want to say. Um, that had an espresso bar. Uh, I was a general manager there. And so we had like a manual espresso machine. Everything was from scratch. It was beautiful. It was fantastic. Um, and so I found out that I had a huge passion for coffee and really, really enjoyed it. And I have an espresso machine at home and I still like to do things for myself. Um, and I've also really enjoy having friends over sometimes and making them lattes or different things. But, um, I found out that I could be on this. Actually, I be, was on this service before I became a parent, but I never used it. And how it works is they'll text you whenever there's like a coffee shop in the area who needs a shift covered. And that shift will get sent out to all of the baristas that are like on call. And whichever one replies back first gets the shift. So, um... I hadn't really, it just hadn't worked out to claim any, and then I had been very nervous, um, especially after, you know, having my son and not working anywhere for quite a while. I was just very self-conscious and nervous, and so I hadn't taken any, um, and then I got a text last week, at the top of the week, uh, offering a shift, and I thought, and it was on, it was for Sunday, which, you know, my husband's home, so, and it was for, like, 10 to 6, which is the middle of the day, so it's only one of Oliver's feeds. He nurses right now morning, evening, and once during the day, so I felt like it wasn't really a big deal if I took that shift, like, it didn't mess with the morning, it didn't mess with the night, it would be, I wouldn't have to get up early or stay up late, um, it just felt like it was a good setup, but it was long and I thought it was far from home. I would later find out it was really not that far from where I live and I was just really nervous and anxious. So I didn't take it. And then I got a text again from them offering the shift at a little bit of a higher rate. Um, I guess sometimes when it gets close to the date, if the shift's not filled, then that service will pay more for the shift. So I thought, man, maybe I should do that, but I can't tell if what I'm feeling right now is 
me being outside my comfort zone or me having a gut feeling like an intuition. So I just didn't take the shift again. Well, I got a text again and they offered it at an even higher rate and I'm pretty sure the highest that they offer. So I was like, okay, I cannot afford to turn this down. Like that is great money. You, you make that plus tips, uh, whatever tips you make while you're working, you take, um, and everything about it seems perfect. I mapped it. Like I said, it was closer than I thought. And my husband was like, yeah, I mean, you should do it if you, if that's what you want to do. So I sat there and I told him all the things I was nervous about. I was nervous that my latte art wasn't going to be very good because that's not something, you know, for most people's drinks, you're using regular milk at my house. We don't have regular milk. So like I'm a little out of practice with that. Um, there's all of these fancy equipments that are in a lot of these coffee shops that, you know, I've never had to work with that. I know what they are, but I've never had to use one on also, every espresso machine is a little bit different. Um, what if the people I'm working with or person I'm working with, you know, like judges or what if I'm not fast enough or what if a customer is mean, you know, whatever. And I really felt like so nervous about all that. But at the end of it, he pretty much was like, well, so who cares? Like if you screw up or, you know, you just don't go back again. And I said, you know, like, that's true. I'm not utilizing the service right now. So it's not a loss. Like if I go and do a terrible job and they fire me and never get me another job again, like I haven't lost anything. Um, and so I really chose in that moment to view like taking this job for the day as literally an adventure. Like, and that's kind of what the topic is today is just being able to view everything around you as very movable, as very temporary, as truly an exciting adventure. Because, you know, not being tied down to that job, knowing it was a one-day thing, knowing that I wasn't going to be obligated to go back if I didn't want to, uh, knowing that that wasn't my day-to-day -day life, it didn't feel the same way that I used to feel going into uh, a job like when I was at Starbucks, I really enjoyed making the drinks, but the customers were extremely mean. Like I just don't, I say mean and it feels juvenile, but I don't have another word. Like I was just like verbally abused all the time. I had to cry in the bathroom all the time. Um, and I think that a lot of that might have had to do with the particular part of town I was living in. It wasn't that Nashville. It was a rich, uh, <laughs> it was where the country singers live. And sometimes, um, they weren't the nicest. Sometimes they were. But point is, um, those were the type of clients I was dealing with. And I just remember, like, always being so worried that I was going to cry at work or that someone's going to be so mean to me. And when it happened, I, the reason why I was having these crying fits and, you know, going in the bathroom and losing it is because I really felt like that was it for me. Like, this is what I do. I wake up, I get verbally abused and I can't do anything right. And then I, you know, work my ass off. I'm physically exhausted and in pain and sore. And I go home smelling like coffee grounds. And, uh, you know, at the time I, we didn't have a home. We were living in Airbnbs and I just felt like this is my life, you know? This is my uh, situation. That's my every day. And now that some time has passed and that's not the case anymore, I realized that it's so much smaller than it really felt at the time. Even if I were to go get a job at a coffee shop near me, which I have thought about doing, and if we ever get to a point where we really need the money, then I will do that. Or if my schedule ever somehow clears up in some way, then maybe I'll do it because I would enjoy myself. And the moment that it became just people yelling at me and making me feel badly, it's going to be one of two things. One, I now have the perspective to say like, fuck those people. I mean, who cares, right? Those people are here for five minutes of my day 
why do I give a shit what they think, right? Or I do get upset and that's not my fault and I can't control that and I quit. Go, I either find another job or whatever. And I guess that for a great part of my life, I was really like a part of the big machine or whatever, the quote unquote system, you know, I'd not, not to sound that way, but I didn't really know how else to put it, but that was my life to where I had to go to a job Monday through Friday or whatever, 40, 53 hours a week. And I had to work my ass off and I had to use my whole paycheck to go towards bills, etc. And when you're a part of that, I think it really feels like you have no choice and no say in your life as a whole. And that's really what I what I want to get at here because I'm not saying that everybody can like just not work or can afford to just leave their job recklessly. You know, that's not the point and um I'll get I'll get to uh the idea of not working later, but uh the point really is that that's not your whole life. You're not stuck there as they say like you're not a tree get up and move. You're not rooted. You're not planted. Move. Change your life. And I have always kind of had that personality and that attitude. I've always been a little bit of a runner. I've, you know, been a traveler. Like I love to go on trips places and I always feel like I'm like finding little pieces of my heart or maybe losing them in places all around the world. And I think to myself, like I could live like when I was in Amsterdam, like I could live here. I could stay here and I want to. And that's on my list one day. And one day, like, if it ever becomes feasible, we totally will, would move to Amsterdam. And it was the same experience when I went to Seattle. And when we moved to Nashville, we had literally never been to Nashville. We came one time after already getting the job offer just to make sure that we didn't, like, hate the town or something. <laughs> That is my personality, and even still, even like with that being the person that I am, I always felt this huge anxiety, like I had no choice but to be where I was at all times. It wasn't that I didn't think I could get another job, or that I didn't think that I could move, or whatever the situation would be. I think one part of it is literally anxiety, like I have an anxiety disorder, and I think that that has to do with it. Um... And I think a part of it is that we're just so accustomed to, like, slaving away at our jobs. Um, and when I was sort of broken of that lifestyle, of that schedule, it really shook things up for me. So, I know that I've kind of briefly mentioned this before, but uh, just to recap, I became a stay-at-home mom because it was the only option and also because it was what I wanted. So when I was pregnant, I was not making very much money. I was not salaried. Uh, the job that I had had quote-unquote benefits, and by that I mean insurance that allowed me to see a doctor four times a year. And I could only find one doctor's office in the entire city that would accept the insurance because it was an open plan or whatever. So, point being, and no time off. I had no paid time off. I had no paid maternity leave. Nothing. So, the benefits at that job were pathetic. (laughs) The pay was not good. Um, And it was not going to make any money for me to have gotten childcare. It would have probably like maybe broke even or cost me a little bit of money. (laughs) So that wasn't an option. Now I do have an associate degree and I have, I think I have a great resume. So maybe I could have gotten some other job, but the fact of the matter is I've been passed up for so many positions by people who I know that I work much harder than people who I think I could kick out of the park with my charisma, with my work ethic, uh, with my drive, with my focus. People who I, I mean, personally know have gotten jobs. Multiple people that I know personally got a job that I interviewed for and did not get. And I am 
90% sure that the reason they got it was because they have the bachelor's degree and I have only an associate's degree because any other part of that, I mean, like I'm not shit talking, these are my friends, <laughs> but like, I just think that if I, and I have been the hiring manager before. So if I'm a hiring manager and I'm lined up with these three individuals, I'm just like, I know that I gave a better interview and I know that I had a great resume. So, um, I didn't always have a very easy go at getting a job that would have paid enough to make it worth it, but that's really fine because I always knew that being a stay-at-home mom was definitely the way that I wanted to go. It was just important to me. It was something that I really wanted to do, and I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it's great. It's the most funnest thing I've ever done um, because it's not, and it's... I don't think that I ever thought it was, like, easy <laughs> because I have nannied, because I have worked in daycares. I've worked around children in many, many ways. Worked at, you know, done birthday parties, babysitting, all of it. Um, so, I get it. It's not easy, but it's definitely harder than I thought it would be. And also, just different than I thought it would be. Like, the isolation is not something that I expected. The feeling... Of just wanting to turn to someone, anyone, and say something. Like, maybe the TV is going on in the background while you're doing housework. And, you know, something happens on a commercial that reminds you of something funny that you noticed. And you just want to turn to someone and tell that story. Or you just want to turn to someone and ask their opinion on something. <laughs> something stupid, like a new music video that might be out. Or a new song that you heard. Or, you know, whatever. Whatever is you're absorbing in your life that you don't have anyone to share that with. There's a lot of things about being a stay-at-home mom that I didn't expect, uh, but it still, um, I think, was a great choice for us. And I love it in many ways, of course, even though it can be incredibly difficult, exhausting. I do love it. And so it was always really important to me, but it was also really the only option. Um, so I kind of had to get used to just not having that schedule where I'm tied down to anything. Like my new schedule became whatever Oliver needed it to be and whatever I needed it to be. Uh, but there's a little bit of say in that, right? Like there's, it's adjustable. And if he's not eating or napping, then that means we can do, reasonably speaking, whatever we want. I mean, I can't, we can't like run off to Vegas and go play the slots, but we can go to the park or we can go to a mom's group or we can go to a play date or, you know, any host of things that we do on a regular basis for his benefit, for mine, just to get out of the house. Uh, and so, that has been invaluable to me in shaping how I really view life as a whole because having that freedom forced me to realize that nothing is permanent. So, like, yeah, we're having a bad day and his schedule is off, but, like, I know that's today only. Sorry, I had to slurp my water. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, but anyway, there's not, there's no like, there's none of that work anxiety. And I think that work has like a really specific anxiety tied to it. There's none of that like feeling that this is my life and this is all that I am and this is all that I experience. Uh, that's just gone. And I mean, it does, of course, you can get a similar feeling being a stay at home mom. But you do have these different certain, you know, liberties. And if you do have a good network of people, whether it's family or friends or other parents that you know in your neighborhood, then there's also, you know, oftentimes the opportunity to meet up with someone and have a chat or maybe even have them watch your kid for a couple minutes while you run and cook something or while, you know, you do something nearby. It's just, everything kind of changes in that way, if that makes sense. So, when 
this opportunity to work again came up. It re- I really viewed it all completely different because I was like, this genuinely is an adventure for me. Like, this is fun. This is something that I want to do and I am in- going to enjoy doing. And I did. I had a blast. I had so much fun. Uh, when I first got there, I was going to be working by myself. There was someone there to let me in and show me everything. And then, boom, I was on my own for three hours. I um, loved that. I liked being able to run things and be in charge of things and feel like I could accomplish something uh, visible and feel like I was in charge of things that weren't wiping asses for, uh, you know, a couple hours. And uh, then I got some help and it was just one kid and he was really nice and I had a really great time having a conversation with him and sort of just stepping outside of my world because this was a 17-year-old boy So, like, everything that he had to offer me and everything that I had to offer him was new and different. Um, Like, I got to hear what, you know, kind of music he liked and um, just sort of talk about how it feels to be getting ready to go to college and different things. And I personally, maybe this is because I'm a writer, I sort of soak everything up for my books. And (laughs) as a young adult writer, he's someone that age is probably like the perfect person for me to chat with at any time. They're like, I like this song. And I'm like, yeah, what else? (laughs) But, um, but I just think in general too, that it's amazing to sort of surround yourself with people who live a vastly different life than you. And it's just so interesting. Like, I guess that probably like my very best friends, we have pretty similar lives. So it makes sense because you want to like bond and, you know, connect on many different levels. But I also think that it's really, really great to be around those people who are just different from you and to hear what they have to say. And everybody's life experience is valid. So there's always something to hear, I feel like. Uh, So for me, that was awesome. And I got paid. (laughs) I got paid to do all that. So how cool is that? But it's even exciting extended far beyond the concept of working or not working or how I spend my days. It's extended to, um, like how I view a really bad moment. I have had some really challenging times ever since pretty much becoming a mom. I think that's pretty standard. When things pile up, When your child has been hitting you and screaming and crying all day and won't nap and won't eat and, you know, has strewn their toys all over the house and then your husband gets home and maybe he just leaves that one thing where you asked him six times not to leave it or doesn't do something that you've asked him to do or whatever it may be and, you know, that all piles up and etc. Like thing after thing, it really starts to feel like I am trapped in this small house and it's garbage. Like my life is garbage. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm suffocated. And I've had, I've had that feeling a lot. I think that it's different from before. Like I've always, I've always been one to get overwhelmed by what I'm feeling And it's just, like, the way that it's interpreted, it just depends on my situation. But that's, like, kind of, like, the stay-at-home mom version of that, like, suffocated, overwhelmed, depressed feeling that I can get. And in the past, um, it could really, really consume me. Uh, But now, what I have been able to realize is I can stop myself right there and... At that moment where I feel like this is my life, like, I hate life. I hate my life. I hate feeling, you know, I, I, I hate that this is what I'm stuck with, basically. I can stop there and I really detach myself from that and say, this is not my life. This is a temporary situation, set of situations maybe, that will change. And, um, I don't hate life. I hate the situation. I hate that things aren't going my way. I hate the way that I'm feeling right now. I hate that, you know, I feel stuck 
uh, because of this or that. But I really stop myself and I really look around, especially this is especially helpful if you are outside, at least in my experience, because I think inside you're so isolated from like the whole rest of the world. Inside you are stuck with whatever else is inside with you. And that is usually the mess, the babies, etc. Step outside and really like observe as much as you can. And I say to myself like, Life is not Oliver crying. Life is not Seth leaving a mess on the counter or in my car or wherever. Life is not us being broke. Life is not me feeling lonely or depressed or overwhelmed. I like take that deep breath and I look around and I say, life is the sun shining. Life is the way that breeze feels. Life is the sound of the birds in the trees. Like it's amazing and beautiful. And when I look at that, I'm like, This is what's permanent. This is what I can't change. This is what is immovable. Is this gorgeous, amazing world around me. That's that's life. Everything else is a temporary situation. And the good stuff too. And that I think that's an important perspective too. You know, I love my little toddler, but one day he's gonna be a teenager and then an adult. You know, in other, every person that you love, they may die or they, your situation may change. They might move away or get old or whatever, you know? So I know that it's very easy for people to be like, oh, you just need to cherish, blah, 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 appreciate, blah, 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 the ones that you love. But I mean, in those moments, like I really, really look at what, what around me is like infinite and like the blue sky, you know, what is always going to be there. And it's when I see what's not always going to be there, I think that's a real change in perspective. And it really says to me, well, then I have nothing to lose. If everything is temporary, what do I have to lose? If one day this coffee shop might not even exist, then what does it matter if I go and work and make a fool out of myself? If one day I might not even live in Tennessee, then, you know, who cares if I go to a new mom's group that I've never been to before and I don't get along with the moms? Who cares? Because, yeah, sure, they might talk about me or whatever, but I also might one day not even live in Tennessee. And that's never happened. I was just using it as an example. I don't know. Maybe people have talked about me, but I, I have had positive experiences in with my Tennessee friends. <laughs> but anyway, I really think this is important for uh, moms. It's important for everyone to realize. But I also think that it's an important thing to realize as a parent because whether you are a stay-at-home mom or whether you are a parent who works, I think that it's very easy, like I said, to get caught up and consumed by your circumstances, but none of them are going to last forever. And I also think that because that is known, I think that should really push you toward what it is that you want. So if you're at a job that you hate, why? Is it because you need that paycheck? That makes sense. Okay. But are you looking for another job? You know, or maybe you're trying your best. That's fine. But again, just reminding yourself that that other job is out there. Or whatever, you know, the that next set of situations is out there. And I think that there's like a big fear attached to doing something like moving out of state or moving out of the country or even moving to the next city. And there's a big fear attached to, you know, switching jobs, especially without a backup plan. And, uh, really there's a big fear attached to a lot of things that are something that you're chasing, whether it's like following your dream, like part of why a main, a really the main reason why I didn't have a job that was going to be transferable uh, after pregnancy 
is because when we moved to Nashville, we went for it with uh, music. I wanted to focus on my music and my writing, and I knew that I needed jobs that were going to like allow for that, and I needed jobs that were going to keep my focus in the right place. I so I've found I have worked the traditional nine to five office job, and I found that it very much changed the way that I viewed um, like everything. Like just my focus was like on that job, and I mean I was still working full time, but I think just like that that flexibility in the hours allowed for me to really focus on like booking shows and things. So like if I have a show, my schedule can change at that job versus like if my job's hours are set in stone, then everything else is kind of built around that. So it really allowed for my focus to be my music career, my writing, a uh, little acting, you know, etc. And that was scary. Back then, that was scary to go from having a stable job where I made good money and had good benefits. This was back in Maryland to moving to Tennessee where I don't know anyone or anything and working a job that did not pay much and, you you know, didn't, of course, didn't have benefits and things like that. And really like allowing my focus to be something that, to be blunt, like could just go nowhere. That was scary. And then when I became a a stay-at-home mom, that was scary. I remember a lot of times thinking we were not going to be able to pay our bills before I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, So we had to take a leap of faith on that and buy a house with, you know, a month. Like, we ended up moving in a few days before Oliver was born. So... And everything looked good in the house, but it's like when you buy a house too, the sort of risk that you're taking is there's no landlord if something breaks. Like, that's on you. And we had to do that right before having a baby with really no savings account, have barely any money saved up to pay the bills, no paid maternity leave, no paid paternity leave, etc. And that was really scary. And that was a leap of faith. And every single time that I've had to make one of these adjustments, it has always worked out. And a part of that is that I think that when your heart and your head are in the right place, things do work out. I think that it's important that you are, you know, really following the right things for the right reasons. And when you are, I think that things work out. But I also think another part of that is that it was always going to work out. So even though I didn't have to do anything too crazy early on, eventually I did babysit for a long time when I had a small young baby and was still trying to figure out who I am as a new mom and I was still trying to unpack my house, still learning all kinds of things about parenting and, you know, I'm still like physically, my body was changing and all these different things and it was not easy. It was definitely exhausting. But there was never going to be a time where we just didn't pay the mortgage. There was never going to be a time where I got a babysitter for him and went back to work. Because, you know, like I said, that was my choice. And if that is what you have to do, that's fine. You know, everybody's not the same. But for me, that was just what was important to me. And basically... I knew that it didn't matter what our circumstances were, we were going to make it work. There was, our child was not going to go without. And I did find uh, resources. We did have to go to the food bank at one point and we definitely, you know, had to make sacrifices and work our asses off in a lot of ways, but everything has always worked out. And I really feel like this change of perspective has just been monumental for me because I now feel like there's nothing in the world that I can't pretty much take on because nothing is forever. Like I've said a hundred times in this episode, (laughs) because everything, everything is like a big, beautiful, exciting adventure. 
really. Seth, when uh, I was pregnant, he was working a job, but the company closed. So he ended up having to work at Chick-fil-A again. He was a manager, so the, you know, it paid enough for us to get by, but it wasn't, like, ideal. And he worked a lot of hours, and he did that for a long time. And after a certain time, you know, he sort of started to really miss what he was doing before. And it's crazy because very shortly after, he actually ended up meeting someone who just offered him a job. Like, did not know Seth. And just off intuition said, you know, come interview for my job. I'm retiring. And Seth got that job. And now he's doing that thing again. And he, his work now, his schedule is a little bit, how do I say, it's like he's salaried, but sometimes he gets to have shorter days. Um, he is a little bit independent. He doesn't have to have someone breathing down his neck all day, which is important to Seth. Um, it's just like kind of the person he is and he's doing something that he enjoys. So our dream of course is to be musicians and we're not doing that. Well, we are, but that's not like what pays our bills. (laughs) So he still has to have a job and I still have to be a stay at home mom. But in the meantime, like he still gets to go do something that he really enjoys. So like when he was working at Chick-fil-A, it wasn't perfect. Like there was definitely some, like he had this one coworker who I honestly was ready to go have a conversation with. She was so mean to Seth, but that's besides the point. Um, he went through that. Um, I know that not every day was good. Sometimes customers could be difficult, etc. cetera. Uh, but there was never a time where I saw Seth come home and feel like, or at least say like the things that I would say, like, Oh, it feels like my life is terrible, you know? And he really like stuck through that until he was able to find something again that he really, really enjoyed. And I just think that that's possible for everyone. I think I really, really do. I really think that it's possible for everyone. And so the takeaway there is, first of all, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, go look for something that you enjoy. Like go seek that out, find something that you're passionate about or that is fun or whatever it may be. And secondly, if you're not doing that thing, but you're looking, recognize that what you're doing is temporary and recognize that, you know, you're not stuck there. You're not forced to do that thing. And yeah, I just, I really wanted to share that with you guys. Um, because I don't want anyone to feel trapped. I think that's the worst feeling in the world. And, um, and also if any of you really needed that push to make that change, whether it is looking for a new job or whether it is looking for a new place to live, or if you are in a toxic relationship and, you know, it's leaving that relationship, or maybe it's a relationship that you have with a friend or family member that you need to confront an issue. I just think that like today is the perfect day to do it. You know, I, I just think that everything permanent around us is so beautiful that that is what we're here to enjoy. Like that's what we're here to really focus in on, to really like feel rejuvenated by. And all of the things that we do to pay the bills and the things that, you know, are just a job or whatever, like, shouldn't be what dominates us and ruins our life. Like, we should be able to go through it joyfully because it's something we enjoy, because it's not the most important thing in our lives and we can fully, like, emotionally understand that. So, I hope that this wasn't just, like... Okay, Lauren, whatever. We get it with your little hippie rant. (laughs) I hope that this actually provided some insight or some sort of takeaway to you guys because every single time that I end up in that place and I come back to this thought, it really hits me every single time. It really knocks me into perspective and it really gets me so excited. And I just want you guys to feel that way too because, you know, the listeners that we have, I appreciate you guys so much. And it really means the world to us when you guys, um, provide any sort of feedback or even just 
when you don't even when I see that our episode was heard um it means a lot to me and I hope that what we're doing is encouraging to you guys even if it's just like making your day a little more pleasant I but I also really hope that it is encouraging on a little bit of a deeper level and um I really I don't only want to be funny or you know clever or whatever you want to call us with you guys I also want to maybe be like the push that you needed this week to really step outside your comfort zone and take control of your life because you can all of you every last one of you is smart enough is strong enough is powerful enough has it in you to take control go after the thing you wanted just freaking do the thing i'm shia labuffing you guys just do it (laughs) all of you are smart enough beautiful enough you know, capable enough, adventurous, creative enough to, to do that. And I feel certain about that. So please, please, um, let, take it to heart. And, uh, if this was annoying and dumb, then, uh, send me an email and let me know how much you hated it. Uh, swearingmamas at gmail.com. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail at anchor.fm slash swearingmamas. You can tweet us, Instagram us, Facebook us, etc. <laughs> and uh, we also recently put out an Instagram post with uh, a link to our merch site. So if you would like to get you some sassy mama t-shirts or like a mug or we've got a good like toddler shirt if for any Wu-Tang fans. Um... <laughs> I know that sentence probably sounded crazy and wild if you don't go look at the shirt. So now you gotta. (laughs) Anyway, I think those are all the ways you can connect to us. But it really does mean a lot to receive the feedback. Um, Just, it's encouraging to us. Like, there's not necessarily, like, sometimes it can be helpful to, like, promote our podcast when uh, we receive, like, comments and things on social media. But outside of that, like, I also just really, uh, it's encouraging to hear that something that I might have said or done could have possibly encouraged or lifted or helped someone or made someone laugh when they were having a hard day. Um, And also, guys, we love to feature, like, I know it's been a little bit, I think, but we like to feature, like, funny stories. So if you have any funny stories about your kids um, or anything like that, um, yeah, we love hearing that stuff. So anyways, thanks so much for tuning in and I uh, will be back next week. (laughs) I don't know why this, that was a weird, that was a weird accent. (laughs) Sorry guys. All right. Love you.